Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Fred from GetMeCoding.com and in this video I'm going to go over the new features that just got rolled into Scratch, also known as Scratch 3.0. So let's take a look. Okay, now here we are, we're inside of Scratch 3.0 and if you've used Scratch before you're going to immediately notice right off the bat that it looks different. Okay, so the stage area is in a different spot and the block coding area is in a different spot and so on. So they've, they've switched that around. Now you're gonna see that a lot of this now is even more in tune with the way people are using mobile devices. So the blocks are a little bit bigger and they're being designed in a way that you can easily view them on smaller devices like a smartphone or maybe a tablet, but also working on your PC, which is what this is being recorded on right now. So a lot of, a lot of times whenever you see a new piece of software, you wonder what disappears. If you take a look over here, you can still see we have all the traditional blocks. The one that is missing right off the bat is the block that allows you to draw like a pen. Now it's not gone. It's just located in a different spot. And that's gonna take me right to the area that I want you to see first. And I think it's the area that's most exciting and it's known as extensions. So down here in the lower left, when you click on extensions, they've packaged extensions in a nice, easy to use way, whether you're in the classroom or you're at home, wherever, you can now extend Scratch much easier. Pen, Blocks, they're all right here. You click it, it adds in the blocks. But what's really neat is we have video sensing, which was already in Scratch 2.0. It was being used in various projects, but now it's easily accessible here. And then we have an area that's really fun, text-to-speech. And I'll, I'll click on that so you can see how that works. So now you see some new text-to-speech blocks. And if I were to come in here and let's say, drag that and I wanna say, Hello, this is Get Me Coding. And I could say Hello, speak. this is Get Me Coding. You can now see that we have the Scratch environment can speak. In the past now, students or coders would come in and they would create speech bubbles. So you had to read it. Or you could record your voice. You could still do that. And you would embed that as a sound file and then you would play the sound. But now you can add a little bit of a, another layer where it's a little bit more automated. Just gonna pull that back in here for now for a second and go back to the extensions and I wanna talk a little bit about what else there's out, what else is out there. So if you have devices, a Makey Makey device, Microbits, Lego Mindstorms, or even the Lego We Do, you can now connect Scratch coding blocks more directly to these devices. That's a great exercise to demonstrate to anybody that wants to understand what's known as the Internet of Things or IoT. So I'm expecting in time you're gonna see other devices be added in here, but I also know when you go out to certain uh, websites within Scratch, you can explore there and there's a lot of people that will help you pull in other devices where the extensions aren't built yet and they can explain it. it. Takes a little bit of time, a little bit of patience, but they are out there. Okay, so let's move on to the next thing. In terms of what else has changed with the blocks, if you go into the operators blocks, you're gonna also start to see you can handle text strings a little bit different. Now this is an advanced concept and when we talk about strings, we're talking about characters or letters and numbers and we can manipulate them. When you learn programming or coding, manipulation of strings becomes really important and these blocks here start to make that a lot easier to weave into your coding project. Moving along, you could also see now if you go back to the motion blocks, you've always had the move and so on, but now we have some nice features um, here where you can glide to random positions and that's in this area here. So there's some new gliding and that can make certain applications or coding projects a little more interesting, especially if you're working on a game and you expect some of the uh, users to be interacting with your code. So that's kind of cool. So those are the, some of the new things we're starting to see with the blocks. Uh, everything else I think you're gonna find is still there. Now, when you go over to the costumes area, or the costumes tab, the editor has improved. I think this is a really, really welcome advancement because a lot of us would use the editor to a certain point or if students were using it, you would use it and be like, this isn't really covering or making things look the way I want. So we would go out and we would use tools like Photoshop or 
maybe Adobe Fireworks or Paint. And then we would save the file and then we would upload it into Scratch. Now Scratch has taken that editor and they've made it a little more robust. So now you can come in here and you can work with um, a new eraser tool in here that allows you to be a little bit um, more precise and, and it works in a vector mode, so we're in, which we're in now. You can convert back to bitmap. If you're not sure what those are, check out getmecoding.com and we will go over those concepts there. Also, we can move and work with text a heck of a lot easier, and that's a big, big win also. Ultimately, the paint editor is now much more robust, meaning you can use it and it's connected to Scratch. That means you can tie it right into your project. So that's that's good news. If you click on the sound editing tab, the waveform looks a little different. It looks like somebody spilled some juice on the floor, but this is still a waveform and this is an, a representation of what an audio wave would look like. We now have some new features here where we can edit them. And if you play this, there's the typical scratch meow, but if we wanted to listen to what it sounds like a robot, it creates a little bit of a reverberation type sound, or maybe we could do a, um, an echo. So now these types of effects are automatically built in while you still can come in here and you can trim and you can edit you know, the, the, the file however you want. The editor is a little bit easier to use. Actually, it's a lot easier to use and you can clip and modify sound files and you could also still record sound files and get them into your Scratch environment. Okay, now like any great tool that's on the web today, you wanna have some help. Well, that's why I'm here, and I'm always going to be here. If you ever want to reach out to me, email me, fred at getmecoding.com. But the window used to be over here where you can kick it out, and it would have some tips or some walkthroughs. If you click on the tutorial links here at the top, there's a lot of great starting points that will guide you along, and they're categorized. So these are really, really wonderful to have right at your fingertips. To that point, what if you have bad internet connection or no internet connection, does that mean you can't use Scratch? No, that is not true. If you take a look in the comments link, I'm also providing a link that takes you out to a downloadable version that you can install on your device. And typically it's a PC, so a computer. You're gonna have to install this on a computer and go with it from there. So you do not need to be connected to the internet to develop your code. You can do it right there, so as a download. So it's known as the Scratch Desktop. Another tool that I would like to kind of point out to everybody is also Scratch Junior. Scratch is designed for anybody a little bit older than say seven, so eight, all the way up to, I've had students use it as old as 28 years old. So they learn code and concepts and so on. But if you have a young person, say four years old or five years old, there's something out there uh, just as a reminder called Scratch Junior. And I'll provide that link also down in the comments section here. Okay, so that is the highlighted overview of what are some of the new advancements and changes in Scratch. I think you're gonna find it a lot of fun. I know I did, and I can't wait to start working on some projects. One of the really cool things is if you go into the community, you're gonna to start to see some folks are talking about making Scratch coding projects for mobile. Now that's a little bit different, right? So if you build anything in the old version, 2.0, it still works in this version. However, in the 3.0 version may not work in the old version if you still have that out there as a desktop download or so on. Okay, so there you have it. Those are some of the features that just got rolled into the latest version of Scratch. And you're gonna see that you can get more creative and it's gonna be a lot of fun. If you're a new user to it or you've been using Scratch for a while, I would love to hear from you. So if you can, as you build new things or discover new ways to use these new enhancements, email me at fred at getmecoding.com or just even leave some comments here below. But also what I'd like you to do with this video is make sure that you share it out with anybody else that's using Scratch or maybe they haven't had a chance to see the latest version of it. And as always, I'd like you, I'd love for you to go ahead and subscribe to my channel here at Get Me Coding. All right, thanks everybody. See you online. Happy coding.